severe overheating, burnt in displays, battery drain, reduced durability. These are only some of the issues that iPhone 15 Pro started its life with. But is it really that bad? You know, I think I should start with some things that I definitely liked because iPhone 15 Pro after the 14 Pro does feel like a different phone and the same phone at the same time. There definitely are differences and the one I noticed the most in day-to-day -day life is the smaller size and lighter weight. Not gonna lie, I did have some fears regarding durability, especially after watching all those drop tests. And luckily I didn't drop it once, but I did have a few close calls. The texture of the titanium in my opinion, makes it slightly less grippy than the 14 Pro's stainless steel or leather case. Cases do help, but I was really keen into using the raw titanium. Aside from that, I have zero questions about durability. After a month in a pocket or on the table, the glass still looks brand new and there are no scratch marks whatsoever. One of the reasons is definitely the finish. Natural titanium when scratched doesn't really change its look. Blue or black titanium is a bit more prone to scratches, so if you're a planning on buying darker colors, be extra careful. Now listen, each year we do the same thing, unbox the new iPhone, but this, this phone made me look back at how I felt before. Two years ago, while unboxing 13 Pro, I felt some, some magic and felt myself on the edge of tech. A year after that, with the iPhone 14, it was uh, okay. And the phones seem to have more issues year after year. Here, people are complaining about phones getting hot or burnt in displays. Last year, it was the Rattly camera and battery health going down fast. We had no issues with something like 4S when it came out and it still looks and feels like a premium phone. Well, Steve really knew how to do things. So what happened? Priorities changed, I guess. That's why A17 Pro can do ray tracing now, but gives next to no difference in everyday performance. That small power boost that A17 Pro gives, surprisingly, became another pressure point that held me on my toes the entire time. Hundreds, if not thousands of people online were complaining about overheating issues, and let me tell you, the phone was getting quite hot at times. It wasn't super hot or uncomfortable, just uh, hot enough for you to really notice it. And luckily, happened on rare occasions, charging while playing games or charging while recording 4K videos, so heavy stuff. In regular tasks like social media or taking photos, everything was perfectly fine. Personally, I think the problem is a bit exaggerated, but let's come back to that later. Because I feel like we need to take a little breather and talk about must-have accessories for your iPhone 15 Pro. And to do this, I've teamed up with May Fig now. They sent me this amazing rainbow series case with a rainbow lens film that makes the iPhone look super awesome. It all comes neatly packaged and the unboxing experience is really pleasant. The Mayfigno Rainbow Series case has all models from iPhone 12 to iPhone 15 series and you can get yours now on Amazon. What I especially like about the case is the iridescent aluminum frame that is both tough and nice looking. Just look how it changes colors. I've never had a case like this before and it's definitely gonna get the looks super colorful and mesmerizing and it also has strong magnets making the case 100% and MagSafe compatible. So hit the link in the description to get yours. Okay, let's continue with something about this phone that just put me in a bit of a predicament. So here's the problem iPhone 15 Pro has three main cameras, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 48 megapixel wide, and 12 megapixel 3x zoom lens. Most reviewers would say that 3x is not enough and that no one should buy the regular 15 Pro. And as a person who's tested the 15 Pro with 3x camera and 15 Pro Max with 5x camera, I can say that it's not that simple. I think that the majority of people buying these iPhones should go for the smaller 15 Pro. Straight up comparing 3X versus 5X shots, the difference in detail is not that huge. Only when you really start zooming past 10X, you start seeing the difference. And since most people buying these Pro iPhones don't even use any of the Pro features of the phone, I do think that the regular 15 Pro is a more versatile and convenient phone for most people. And also 3X is better for portraits. It's 
definitely preserve some more natural facial proportions. There is one more thing about cameras and the 15 Pro that I still don't like, losing the focus on the edges of the shot. This is the same problem as the one we had since 14 Pro and Apple doesn't seem to notice that. It is most noticeable in this shot of book pages. Also, I cannot ignore the improved color accuracy in low light shots. Night mode works a bit better than on last year's 14 Pro, preserving more accurate and true to life colors. Again, you really have to do pixel peeping to notice the difference. But if you have an older iPhone like 13 Pro or 12 Pro, difference will be night and day for you. And of course, in a full month, I did shoot a few videos. I have said a lot about videos in my initial testing, and I don't think there was that much to add. Standard videos in 4K60 look just as good as before, but you're not here to listen about that. You want to know about log footage. And let me tell you, this is a proper improvement right there. With log, the iPhone just strips away all the post-processing algorithms and get a video that just begs to be edited. I still think that some HDR work is still present, but it definitely doesn't heard the video quality. Log is a really big deal. The only problem with it is how heavy it is. Mere 10 seconds of such a video can take a full gigabyte of storage, which is a lot. This is a 256 gigs phone and by default, Apple does not allow recording in log 4K 60 FPS on the phone, so I need to connect an external drive. And here is where it gets really interesting, transferring the files to and from the phone. Apple, in its fashion, doesn't give a convenient way to transfer files from iPhone to the MacBook or computer. AirDrop is slow and unreliable, especially when dealing with heavy files. And connecting the phone via cable allows to transfer only those videos that were shot through Blackmagic Cam or similar apps. And this is super annoying. And even when you do it, you have to use a fast Type-C cable, since the cable included in the box is super slow. So yeah, Type-C is a helpful addition that I do notice every day, but unfortunately it doesn't help with faster charging in any way but I will let it slide. The big selling point that didn't turn out to be super useful to me is the action button. So I made a video about the phone, played with the action button a bit, found a way to use it, and then just forgot about it. There are two reasons for it, muscle memory, and complexity. The shortcut I programmed in was a very interesting one, but not something I desperately needed in my life. It was a nice addition to my life, but nothing more. So I found a shortcut from Brandon Butch. I thought it might be interesting for the button to do different thing, depending on my focus mode. Let's say in the work mode, I wanted to open notes and start dictation, boom, done. Or in the personal mode, I wanted to quick launch the camera and take a photo, Done. So as you see, this is a pretty complex shortcut and I think Apple created the action button with a different purpose. I think it shines in those default suggestions that Apple gives us. Turn on flashlight, launch into camera, start in voice memo. As long as it does simple stuff, it is really easy to get used to it. But when you overload it with stuff and functions, it becomes more of a burden rather than a convenient thing. So for now, I'm going to set it to launch the camera and live with that. Live with this phone. Well. I did that. And this is a perfect subway way to talk about battery life. I'm going to keep it pretty short. It is great. The huge reason for this feedback is the fact that my 14 Pro has lost a ton of battery health and doesn't hold its charge really well. In everyday use, with occasional light gaming, taking photos and videos with some social media for dessert, the 15 Pro lasts me a full day, from the morning till the evening, but not more than that. I can really push it to the extremes and turn off always on display, background app refresh, and a ton of other features and that will push the battery life closer to two days, but I don't think that's something you would want to do. Realistically, this is a one day phone and you shouldn't expect anything more than that. And unlike poor fellas out there, I didn't notice any fast battery drain issues on my device. iPhone 15 Pro had a troublesome launch and even after some time has passed, people are still finding issues with it. Well, maybe I'm just extremely lucky. My unit didn't have a faulty battery, its back glass didn't break, and the display didn't burn in, but all those issues shouldn't stop you from buying this phone because all those issues seem to be software related and Apple has already fixed overheating with a software update. And display burn in also seemed to be gone after the iOS 17.1 update. So I would say that you're pretty safe if you buy this phone right now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.